Hey guys, my name's Alex Barham. Let's talk about the 9R, uh, which was Piranha's first, I think basically the first, nine foot whitewater race specific creaker. Uh, it was designed by Jared Sol Solsas, and it came out at a point in time when the Piranha had the Shiva, which was just like amazing creaker, but it was kind of smaller and slower, but really good at steep creaking. And the Burns, which were these amazing river running boat that you could creak the hell out of, but they weren't like the fastest. Um, this boat came out to crush the Stikine race. Uh, it also did really well everywhere else. And then once the pro team had it, we also kind of found out it was just an awesome all around boat. Uh, it has this amazing combination that's really hard to find where you can go really fast in it and still have control and be sustainable, not slip out, uh, which is very typical of whitewater boats. You get really fast and then the back kind of comes away out from under you, like a, hitting the back brake on your bike in a gravel. Uh, but then it also has this ability to be taken really slow on a steep creek and just with small feathering adjustments drop in exactly the speed and angle you want and just creak and destroy. Um, the feeling of, of paddling a 9R is is quite unique because you have this amazing amount of banana rocker in it. Uh, and then the, the hull really comes down to this very narrow center planing surface. So your first time in one, you're probably going to feel like you're riding an I-beam. Uh, it has a very profound uh, effect on me every time I get back in a, a normal, not a large, but a normal 9R. Um, the, the primary stability is definitely there, uh, but this, there's definitely almost more secondary stability that you wind up working with, which is why people really like this boat. It has a very carvy um, feel when it's up at speed, and it's... It's not stable, but it's also very stable all at the same time. So you have to kind of plan out your lines. But as long as you have that game plan and you're thinking about what the boat's going to do, it's very predictable in the way that it does it. And uh, a lot of the stuff that you can do, if you're doing it right, looks super stylish. If you're not, you're going to beat her at a profound level. Uh, so the 9R came out, and like I said... It got way more use in way more ways than they thought they were going to. But one of the big problems with it was it didn't have a full creaking complement of grab handles, which made a lot of people and a lot of event organizers like me nervous. So the 9R Large came out uh, to complement it, let bigger paddlers get the same experience, uh, and they did give it the full set of grab handles. The problem was uh, they didn't elongate the boat they'd already made a 9r at eight feet and 11 inches and when they made the 9r large okay they bumped it to i think they bumped it to a full nine feet but they had to find a place to put volume so they added it in every dimension the way you'd expect it to but then they also put a ton of volume right behind the paddler um, and kind of flared the stern directly behind the seat and this really kind of wound up changing the feel. So you'll hear a lot of people say, yeah, the 9R Large is a good boat, but it's almost a different boat than the 9R. And that's true. But it should be taken with a grain of salt that it's definitely still a good boat. It just definitely doesn't have the same feel as a 9R. Um, I think 9, uh, Piranha put out an article that was like, the 9R Large, not just another 9R, uh, which was kind of comically true to me. In any case... Check them out. They're still a great boat. As of right now, for the 29C season, we will still be able to bring in the original 9Rs, and we will also have the 9R2s. Um, I am sure with the cult following that there are going to be a lot of people out there trying to say that the original 9R is better than the 9R2 in the same way that I haven't even watched the second Super Troopers movie because it would just ruin the first one. So we're just going to see what happens when it comes out. Um, but for right now, check out this overlay of what the 9R2 compared to the 9R looks like. So we're going to a full 9 feet. We're going to be a little bit wider, a little bit more volume. 
So personally, I'm really excited to try it because with my, you know, American heavier build, uh, the 9R wasn't quite enough for me. Um, but I also felt like the 9R large was a different boat. So I'm really hoping that the 9R2 will kind of carry that 190 pound paddler uh, a little bit better. But see when the second 9R comes out. Now, I do also want to make my standard disclaimer that just because you see pros and advanced level paddlers shredding in something doesn't mean it's the right boat for you. This is a race specific kayak. Uh, if you are an intermediate or a beginner paddler, just because you're seeing, you know, just the pros out there shredding these things doesn't mean it's the best choice for you to get to the point that where you can shred in one of these things. These race boats are all super flat bottoms, so you're not really going to bounce off rocks in the best, uh, and they're super fast, so if you're going to crash into something, you're just going to get there faster and hit it harder. So definitely, um, if you're more of a creaker, less of a river runner, and you're still an up-and-comer, go look at something like you know the Machno or the Numad or something with a displacement hull and work your way towards rocking one of these fast boats. Hey guys, my name's Alex Barham. Let's talk about the Piranha 9R. The first one, the OG, uh, well, not the OG, Walk makes a f***ing boat now.